ride. I just did a whole lot of walking to get to this hostel. I find it and it's closed. And the one across the way that I didn't even see noticed is closed. And I'll show you where we're at. So here's the deal, guys. When I got off the Sky Train and I went down the stairs and I got to my first hostel, I found out that they wanted a COVID test. Now, I didn't need a COVID test on my airplane to come here because Kosamui has such a low COVID rate. And I thought, really, you're gonna want a COVID test? And they didn't even want one on the airplane. He's like, well, that's what my boss wants. I'm like, okay, fine, I, I'm sorry. I'm dragging these heavy bags around. I'm not gonna drag them all the way to a hospital just so I can give you a clean COVID test when most places will accept me just to have the business with no COVID test. So I went just a little ways down and there was an expat standing outside. And I thought, oh, maybe he would know of a place. And I walked up to him, I said, hey, do you know of a place that might be of a fair price that I could stay for a while? And he looked at me and he said, six feet away. And I looked at him and I said, really, you're gonna be like that? He says, well, we're in Bangkok. And I thought, you know, I wanna give you six feet of my foot somewhere. And I just let it go because I had a lot of heavy bags and I didn't wanna sit there and deal with this guy. And so anyway, after that, I walked about three more blocks dragging my bags and I found a hotel to stay in. And it wasn't, it wasn't particularly cheap, but it was about the going rate. So they charge about 350 per night. So that's about 10, 12 bucks. And so I booked two nights. That way I figured it would give me enough time to walk around looking for a hostel or some other place that was available. And I looked at five hostels and every single one was closed. Every single one. Now that place that I showed you in the video, that was, uh, I think it was called Mad Monkey, Mad Monkey Hostel. Something. And inside the hostel, the roof was falling in. So God knows how long that place has been empty. There's probably a water leak in there. So it's just been a really interesting experience. Now, what I would recommend is getting on Airbnb, which I just did. And I found a guy that's probably about 15 minutes ride from here. And what I recommend is confirming a reservation, talking to somebody before you even book. I lost about $100 thinking I could just book Airbnb, that that would be a, a good situation, booking a hostel on the other side of the river from where I was staying in Serbia. And they ended up not answering, not even getting back to me. So I lost my money there. They were closed. Didn't have the decency to close their, their ad down on the Airbnb, so it happens. So traveling is hard enough as it is, and then having to deal with all these other inconsistencies, that really makes it a challenge. So I have a place booked. My checkout here at this place is at noon, and I'm gonna hobble my luggage up the, the stairs to the SkyTrain and take the SkyTrain over to this new place. It was like 45 baht, so it's a little over a buck. And it seems to be about 15 minutes away, and the guy is a really good, um, Super host, he's getting back to me right away. I think it'll be a good experience. So, and he has pretty good reviews. I think out of 45 reviews, he's like 4.5. So it looks pretty good. So I'm kind of excited for that and I'm happy to get situated. And once I'm situated, then I can do my thing. And that's the hard part. You come to these places, you don't know what to expect. And with COVID, Asia's really, really, really been shut down. And more so than you would even think and you have to kind of navigate all that and find out what'll work. Vern, did you notice? I didn't notice. Didn't notice anything. Didn't notice a thing. All right, you guys, guess where we're at? We're at Lola's Kitchen, home of the Filipino delicacies. Yeah, I've been looking for that. We are open, welcome back, and here is their menu. These guys have the best pork adobo. How do I know that? I was here once before. It rocks. It really rocks. It really rocks. All right, you guys, so I'm inside Lola's kitchen, but I'm not sure this is real Filipino because I haven't seen anybody do a selfie yet. No selfies. I'm not sure these are real Filipinos, but I'll show you where, where we're at, what it's like inside here. All right, I'm gonna vlog your guys' place. I'll put you in my vlog. All right. Here we are, you guys. Lola's place. Get a chance, check it out. 
Right, so there, there are a few Filipino places in this area since the embassy is here. It's very close. All right. So last time we tried the chicken adobo, it actually was the pork adobo, and this time we're gonna try something else. All right, guys, look at that. We have some mungo. Mm, that looks good. I really enjoyed being there, met some really cool people at that Filipino restaurant. Now I'm headed back to my apartment and it is raining cats and dogs. I'll show you what it's like. Boy, this rain just doesn't let up, man. It's really coming down. It's kind of ridiculous at this point. Wow. Let's see cross here. Deep here now. Yeah. See if I can get it over to my intersection now. I don't know. They're gonna get me wet if I don't hurry up. Ah. 